Welcome back, everybody, to the 2019 National College Dodgeball Championships. Um, I'm your host, Gar Punnett. Um, I am joined with Colin O'Brien. Now, uh, you're going to be new to our hosting now. We yep. lost Kevin to go do some more, <laughs> some more duties. Um, Who did you play for? How long did you play? Give, me, give us a little background yeah, on yourself. Yeah, for sure. So I played for Michigan State uh, from the years starting 2012-2013 uh, season, um, ending... Uh, with the 2017 season, I came back for a half season in grad school, so I did four and a half seasons there. Nice. Um, and so five nationals. Uh, this is my second nationals now, not playing. Not playing? Yeah. Um, so you were a part of, if I'm remembering correctly, this Grand Valley rain. Yeah. How does that feel? I mean, it's that's kind of burn a little bit, <laughs> but does. you're we excited for that rain to end, I'm sure, I'm for anybody. I am. So my fir my freshman year, we uh, we faced Grand Valley in the championship, and that was their uh, the start of this of this six beat. You know, they're going for a seven beat this year. Seven beat. So yeah, that was the the first the first uh, the start of it, and then also my last year. So in 2017, we lost to Grand Valley in the finals. Um, after being up two at halftime, they were able to come back and, and win three two. So that hurts. I've been uh, I've been on the the, the bad side of a uh, Grand Valley two of these uh, six years now so it's been it was rough but um, you know hats off to them just uh, that dynasty going it's, it's been strong that's no kidding no. how did you get involved in dodgeball so uh, from a from a player standpoint you know you're you're coming into college yep. um, you might have played a, a sport in high school whether you played basketball or football or yeah. whatever um, you're coming into the NC or you see maybe there's an NCDA team at your at yeah. your college how how was that for you getting involved in dodgeball was that sort of you were down immediately for sure so um most schools have some sort of club activity fair and at msu we call it sparticipation sparticipation you know, spartan participation yeah. so uh, uh i was just walking the tables there and i saw club dodgeball i thought oh that was interesting i went to the first practice and just kind of fell in love and uh you know the rest is history as, as they say um Five years of college dodgeball later, seven years of playing dodgeball later. It's uh, you're in. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I was hooked, <laughs> hooked from that first hooked. practice. Well, excellent. So tell us a little bit about what we're we're gonna see for this next game. We've yep. got Michigan State in Ohio. So my alma mater the here, alma Michigan mater. State. Um, the very young team. Uh, some of their top players are, are sophomores, and in their the first or second year playing in the NCDA. So they've really ascended uh, quickly in terms of their overall talent. Um, uh, we lost a lot of people from the, my last year playing. Only five players of this roster of 18 um, are still on this team, but a wow. lot of young talent. So the future is bright, but they're, they're saying who cares about the future. We're trying to play for the present right now. And then on the reverse side, we have Ohio, which they took the undefeated number one ranked team, Grand Valley, to overtime yesterday. Um, and they lost in a very tight battle in overtime where they had, the, they had a 3-2 man advantage, and they, uh, Grand Valley was able to turn around with a big catch and then knock out the last two people. Wow, but that's huge. So Ohio, you know, probably their best perf showing ever. And, uh, you know, they're, they're, they're coming in strong. They had a, a poor end of the day. They lost in overtime to, to UMD, I believe. But, um, you know, they're trying, to, they're trying to capitalize, knowing that, hey, we can hang with any Michigan school. We just went to overtime versus Grand Valley. They're you know, feeling we, we, good. We can, feel, we can take out Michigan State here. Right, so they're look, pretty confident. Look for them, look for them to, to come out firing. So what we're going to do here is actually we've got our teams lining up. Balls are being uh, placed on center court. Um, you're going to see uh, Michigan, Michigan State, are, yep, and then, and then Ohio uh, start to face off. Um, we still got a little bit of time left. Looks like we're having the captain's meeting uh, center court. Um, this is going to be a good matchup. One thing to note here, um, so we were peer refed in the uh, in the NCDA, and so we made a, a ruling to everyone that for the first round of games, you know, the six teams that had a bye, you have to be here to ref. We had eight courts going, so that means six teams. There's going to be multiple courts that you might be accounted for. MSU was one of these teams that had multiple courts they had to account for. Um, and whether it was a breakdown in communication, I, I don't know exactly the details, but they only ha had refs for one of the courts. And what we said beforehand is, if you aren't at the courts, what's gonna happen is all of your captains are gonna start with a yellow card in the outline. So for this first point, all of MSU's captains are gonna be out. So they will not have their top players. That just happened? Yeah, so they're, they're coming into this game, this first point, they will not have their top players eligible to play. Wow. So that's gonna be, you know, we were, we were serious. We want everyone to ref, and you know it's unfortunate that they ha they're at one court but not the That's other. It's got to hurt for you a little bit. But yeah, it's it's, it's <laughs> tough, but you know I, our, our team's deep, so I feel good that uh, you know everyone else is gonna have to step up and uh, and and make the plays needed. Excellent. So what we're starting out here is we've got both sides lining up. 12 v 12 college dodgeball. If you're just joining us um, at the 2019 National College Dodgeball Championships. Um, we're going to go over the NCDA rules um, as gameplay continues. Um, but right now we're going to have two teams vying for these balls in the center. They're rushing in. We're going to see what types of kills they can get immediately. Oh, wow. That was quick. 
right off the bat, Michigan State loses a, a player. We've got Michigan State in the black and gold, um, which is actually counterintuitive than what, what I'm seeing Michigan is, State in in the green. Uh, a lot of uh, a lot of the alumni were not pleased with uh, the jersey selection in terms of color color scheme color palette, but. Um, you know, I think they look good. I just would have preferred green in yeah, that jersey it's somewhere. That's your color. That's what everybody <laughs> knows you. Yeah. So, and um, I, I just talked to Felix, the, the president, and they were able to resolve it. So the captains are back on the court for MSU. Um, I think because they were, you know, here, and they, because of that communication. So it would have been just a miscommunication. Yeah. They're and, not going to penalize not, exactly. Michigan State. Not, okay. not a, a choice. Oh, we've got a, we got a. Wow, that's, that was a great. It's a good heads up play by 32 there. So. If you were to block it, and as it go, as you saw it went up in the air, he's eligible to catch it. It would be just like a normal catch. Terminology being used, still a live ball, exactly. not dead until it hits the ground. Yeah. So he was, he had his head on a swivel there, realized it popped up, could get a catch there. Now the difference between uh, a player catching his own deflected ball yeah. um, is that the opposing player that threw it is out. Correct. But on a, uh, if you were to deflect a ball and then another teammate catches it, the players, yep. Player still happens. Yep. It's just the player's not out. Correct. Um, right. Yeah. So, good heads up play there by 32. If if another player ran and catch that, the thrower would have been fine. But he he had he was uh, looking alive. Ooh, a nice catch there. Um, Lico catching number three Fleck for Ohio. Was that a Michigan State catch? It was. Okay. So that brings in number 24, who was the first out. He actually got out right at center court on just a quick. It wasn't even, I'm not even count that a throw. It was like a quick ball jab right to the chest. And uh, Weakland had a really good day yesterday. Uh, they ended up going to overtime versus UWP, and he tried to kill nearly eight minutes. He got down to about a minute and a half by himself. Um, he had, it was about eight on one versus UWP, and he got him down to just two people and eventually ran out of gas. But uh, he had a big day yesterday for Michigan State. Now, sorry to sound like a broken record for some of our more from our fans on the live stream, but I do want to explain so how this how this works in terms of shot clocks. Um, you're going to get both teams um, needing to sh throw a ball. Wow, that was a great out by o Ohio on their captain um, Peyton Schuster on their ca on Michigan's captain. You're going to need both teams to throw within a 15 second clock window. Big catch. Great catch Lucas by Walsh. Michigan State. And if one team doesn't throw within their shot clock. Uh, time and time expires out of that 15 seconds. Um, actually, the the violated team is going to have to relinquish all their balls see over a, to the other team. See a big hit there by Jacob Georges. He's he's a first year player and he's quickly become one of Michigan State's most dangerous arms. So we've got a little bit. What seems like I don't know. It seems kind of even still. Um, Looks like. But eight, Michigan. Eight for Michigan State on. Seven, seven. For Ohio. but it seems even. Oh, wow! Was that a trap or a catch? They're calling that blocked into the ground. It was blocked close. into I the ground. He yeah, I thought he might have caught it. Number 14 might have gotten a catch, but it turns out it was a block into the ground. We've got Michigan State advancing here. Going to try to go for a team team throw. Only one, only one throw going through. Another point on the shot clock is you have 15 seconds to throw if you have six or more people. That's true. But once you get to five or less people, you know, then the ten. shot clock now goes to 10 seconds. 10 second shot clock. What a great catch. Team catch there. It clipped Georges on the way through. Weakland making that catch, bringing in Michigan State's captain, Peyton Schuster. So nobody out from Ohio from that team catch, but Michigan State gets to bring in somebody. Oh, yikes. A big team oh, throw big, there. big loss on both sides. And so as you see now, Ohio is down to six people. So this next out is huge for both teams. If Michigan State's able to hit Ohio, instead of having to throw every 15 seconds, Ohio will have to throw every 10 seconds. So how gameplay works here at the NCDA is we've got two halves of 25 minutes apiece. Wow, big out, number 88 on Michigan State. And Schuster, their captain, eliminating number 12 for Ohio, and now they're down to five people. Okay, two halves of 25 minutes apiece. We've got both teams trying to eliminate the other team as many times as possible within that half to gain as many points as possible within that half. What we're going to see here is these two teams trying to get the first point and really take a command over this game. Great jump, jump, jump fake. Nice throw by number 43. Now, when I played, it was 15 on 15, and we made a rule change down to 12 on 12. Um, it was 15 on 15. It was 15 on 15 back. Wow, that's a lot of players and, on the court. And it was harder to come back. So it, it was, it's less than so now, it's still very important, but that first point really sets the tone. If you take that advantage early on, 
Oh, nice Steve throw by Michigan catch. State. And one of them's That's captain here. number 43. And they eliminate number 31 to finish it off. Just like that, 19 minutes, 51 seconds left to go in the first half. Michigan State gets a point. Captain Kevin Wynn for Michigan State, very excited for Michigan State, that opening point. That was pretty incredible. That was a, a, one of the faster points I've seen today, actually, yeah, done in around six, well, just over five, five just over five minutes. Yeah. That was, that was good. Michigan State, their first game uh, yesterday was versus Grand Valley. Um, started out very poorly, their first two points. And then the third point, they were able to win. And from that point forward, they what? played much more uh, together as a team. And we're talking, we're pump faking for each other, covering for each other. And I think they've carried that momentum through the rest of the day and into Sunday, apparently. So what we're actually seeing here on the screen is we've got Ohio's doing, they're really trying to get pumped. They probably came together, they did a little strategy change. Captains might have said, hey, this is what we need to work on. Michigan State didn't even uh, didn't even regroup. They just got to the line. They know what they're doing. They're so ready. Keep doing what we're doing. You know, run that right back. Keep doing what we're doing. Look at you. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Oops. Admittedly, admittedly biased. I, I will I will fully say. <laughs> All right, we had two teams advance. Tell me about the strategy here. You had number 88 run to the line, and immediately he didn't take any shots. He threw it back to his player. So one of the big things in college dodgeball is ball possession. So there's 10 balls on the court, and because you're, you're throwing back and forth each, you know, in 15 seconds, having the difference between three balls and seven balls is huge. So a lot of times, you know, some of the top teams on the rush, they might have a player there, but they realize that having six or seven balls is more valuable over the course of the game than maybe getting an easy out right at the start. Right. So that's why a lot you'll see a lot of these top teams grab the ball, and someone might be right there, and they'll just run back and say, hey, let's regroup, yes. and we have our six balls now. Oh, great catch. That was one wild, hit. Yeah, one hit. Oh, that's an out. What a great cross-court shot by, I think, number 23. Yeah, Sandra Rivera, former captain of MSU, now assistant captain. Okay, Ohio State. Oh, nice catch in transition. Um, by number 70 for Ohio, Brian... Shot. Ooh, ooh, balls being traded, players being tagged. I think we got one loss of Ohio there. Still, team's pretty confident walking forward. Ohio getting into the neutral stone. Michigan State looked like that was a trap, trap ball on. Calling, calling on him out. Calling hit, it, hit his hand into the ground. I think that's the oh. right call. I think that was the right call. I think, wow. I think it hit Sandra's hand and then he pushed it into the ground and then gained possession. Wow, so okay, I, I so that was a good call by the ref there. Horrible call on my part. Definitely <laughs> thought he made the catch, but what do I know? That was one of the things I would all I would always um, try to call the attention of refs, because a lot of times um, when it's really close to the ground, players would kind of push it into the ground, then possession would be like, oh, I caught it. And I would say, no, you pushed it into the ground. And, and then, then like made it look like you gained possession. You should be out, and a lot of times people would call it like a trap, which would, used to be, the, you know, no one's Neutral, out. Neutral, right. And then, or they'd call it a catch. And, it would drive me crazy as a player. I'd be like, no, they're pushing it down. <laughs> but as you see, a lot of times, these teams will go up and go back. There's a flow to college dodgeball. You're on a full basketball court. You're running up and down. The neutral zone is, is about 30 feet long with 30 feet row lines. So you'll see Ohio moving up now as MSU's going back. And that opens up the transition game. Well, I mean, right off the bat, I, I mean, it just from the feel of it, Michigan State is being aggressive. I mean, they are commanding a presence here against Ohio. Wow, great kill. And I would say that's the biggest difference from those first two points versus Grand Valley yesterday. Grand Valley completely dictated what the pace of the game was and completely showed that, hey, we're pushing you back. And MSU, from that point onward, about the second half, they said we can't have this anymore, and they're really showing it now where they're, they're dictating it, forcing Ohio back. Now this looked like uh, one of the teams took a timeout, maybe Ohio. Um, teams will do that with um, – you know, just to try to see if they can halt the momentum. If they're really feeling like Michigan State's kind of being overbearing in some yes. way, they're gonna they're gonna take a pause, take a breather, and say, "Hey, this is what we need to do to reset." I think maybe we even might be able to cut to a shot here of this of this group meeting that we're having one of the coaches. Is that was that a coach I was just looking yeah, at? Yeah, I think so. It might be um, it might be a former player or uh, or uh, a player's out. But yeah, it, during timeouts, only captains and and coaches are allowed on the court besides the current players. And one thing I think about that timeout too was there was a ball that was perhaps within reach for MSU, but in the zone of Ohio. Oh, great catch. As a Jacob Number Fortis 14. Nice catch as well. But 
if you call timeout and a ball is in your z anywhere in your zone, you then get game possession of it. So they call timeout, and MSU may have been able to reach across and get that. But they were able All right, to we got a player ball. falling down on his. Oh! oh! Almost able to. to squeeze that there in the chest. Sorry, I, I know for some viewers I might have just screamed into the <laughs> mic. That was my fault. I got. I'm getting into this. 31 not able to hold on to the back pedal, eventually falling and not being able to keep track of that ball that was hit him in the hit him in the stomach. Lucas Walsh looking for a catch there, dropping to his knees. Oh, great hit right Jake, in the shoulder. Jacob George has been on fire this, this, these two first two points for MSU. He's and Howman's a great player, so it's not like that was an easy kill. No. His arms, again, just a first year player for Jacob is. So Oh, wow. You know, you got to assume he's just going to get better and better. And it looks like a ball's over violation on Ohio. So that was a shot clock violation on Ohio. Um, looks like they're, yeah, they've got two two guys left. Uh, means their shot clock's down to 10 seconds. Yeah. So that's, they need to keep, they need to keep that communication going as a team, make sure these guys are, are not in the position that they are in now, where they are about to face an onslaught of Michigan State players fully armed. Here so we go. Ohio State didn't throw within those 10 seconds. So the penalty for that is you forfeit all the balls to the other team. All the balls to one side. We got two players, one on his knees, getting ready to make a catch and gets out immediately. Not able to make a play on it. We've got a, a, a lonely number. Oh, oh my wow. Goodness. Headshot. Peyton Schuster. Okay. In That's got to hurt right knocked, in the face. Knocked, knocked his glasses. Off the knocked off the glasses. And he's pumped. He's pumped. Yeah, he Michigan. Yeah, Michigan State's got some. Wow, he's really he's <laughs> Rivera coming off strong from getting out early on that uh, trap ball call. He's he's feeling better. Now, so that's now two points in under ten minutes. For yeah, Michigan that's State. that's this is Michigan State's really really getting some traction here, and that might have come from playing the there Michigan State. Really, I mean, probably having a good practice match against Grand Valley to get really the juices moving and really the momentum, confidence, um, everything they might need to practice yesterday to have such a great performance today. I watched um, portions of that all, of, all all three of the Michigan State's games yesterday, and those were by far the two best points they played. That's um, fantastic. And, and of these four games they've had so far this weekend. Uh, yeah, they're moving as a team. They're covering each other, um, making smart throws, accurate throws. And then, you know, when you have power like Schuster or George's, they're just going right through them. And, and Ohio hasn't had a response yet. Okay, Ohio. They're doing the regroup, regroup getting to the baseline. Michigan State again. No need for the, uh, the team chant here. They're all pumped. They're ready to go. We got 88 right here. He's, uh, he's ready to go. Now, you never want to go down 2-0, obviously, but... You know, the, the bright side for Ohio is there's still plenty of time. There's yeah, lots of time. 15 and a half minutes left in the first half, and you have the entire second half. Yeah, so, there's a know, lot of gameplay left. Sometimes two points take 12 minutes apiece, and all of a sudden it's second half, and then it's a lot harder. But you know, Wow, a lot of rushing coming in. We had... So you're supposed to let go, yep. And then both uh, teams are supposed to go out, and then... It's a neutral ball again, but that looks like Ohio it's going to be Ohio's. They've got, they've got the balls. A little awkward there, I'm sure, for some of the viewers. If oh, if almost got. If at any point two players from opposing teams both possess a ball. Nice jump on number 43. After nice two dodge. Seconds, you're supposed to, you know, release it and it's reset to the middle there, and then whatever team can then get that ball will be able to get it. Can you explain to me? I mean, there was sort of a rule too about you're not allowed to like take a ball from somebody. So exactly. in that scenario, you'd actually be punished if you ripped it yes. from somebody. Yeah. If so once someone has gained possession, you, know, you can't just take the ball out of their hands. So it really only happens on the opening rush where right. you know, two guys are running. They both grab it at the same time. They kind of like pull and they both pull away. And they look at each other and they say, okay. Yeah, release, we'll put it back. Put it in the middle. And I think that's part of the sort of the great part about this. The, this league is still a lot of integrity, a lot of integrity with these players. I think that's sort of the backbone of the NCDA is I've seen so many of these players call themselves out on debatable calls. And I think I think that's it's all dodgeball, you know. Especially in NCAA, there's 10 balls, there's 12 people on each side. A ref can't see everything. You right. know, there's going to be times when we got three a great balls block on number 24 on, on both sides, and it's really, you know, it's the onus is on the players. If you get hit, go out. You yep. know, you should not have to rely on the referee to say, "Hey, that hit you. You're now out." If you feel it, you know, yeah, just take yourself is such out. A yeah, key part of the game. So what we're seeing here is we've got uh, Ohio sort of standing down Michigan. Um, now I'm going to correct you there. Us, us, us Spartans, Michigan State, you know, we can't, right. we can't I'm be sorry. I'm by, sorry, by, I'm by sorry. Michigan. Okay, <laughs> fine. Yep, I'll, I'll keep, I'll keep, 
<laughs> Keep it to me, Michigan State. <laughs> um, state, state, yep, fine. state, state. Yep, yeah, yep, yep. But, uh, yeah, not, not just Michigan there. That's okay. The okay. That, um, yep. All our viewers at home will, will be cringing if that, if that, if that, if that, if that ever happens. And well, you know, throw it into the chat. Let me, <laughs> let me hear this. I want, I want to get something going on the chat. So if, if you're on, if you're on Twitch, if you're on YouTube, make, make sure you're, you're commenting towards me. I'll, I'll take, I'll take your comments. This is, this could be good. But I'm not going to make that error. I'll try not to make that error again. So what you're seeing here is you've got Michigan State there you go. coming into the neutral zone. They're going to try to make a team throw getting out. It actually ended up being a catch. Um, Ohio needs them. That's how they were yeah, able that's to take Grand Valley to overtime yesterday. They were catching everything. They haven't had a lot of those in those first two points. So look for them. You know, keep looking for those catches. And uh, that's, that's their recipe for success. Um, so if anybody's tuning in here for the 2019 National College Dodgeball Championships, um, we've got 12 minutes, 52 seconds to go in the Michigan State-Ohio matchup. Uh, Michigan State commanding a 2-0 lead. Um, Ohio's got to come back and at least get a point in this first half. Um, Definitely started out better here. It's been about yeah. three minutes since the start of this point, and uh, they think they only have two people out. So much better start for uh, the Bobcats here. Um, in point number three. Oh. Nice, nice out. George's again. He's on yep. fire. Number 14 gets number three out on Ohio. All right, we've got push into the neutral zone here with Ohio. Nice throw. Oh, good. Good you, dodge. If you look there, the right side of Ohio, they pump faked, which Peyton Schuster had to hold up. So that's, that's a big part of, of college dodgeball is that team play. So he was looking on the right side, Schuster ready to throw. Oh, he didn't have to go for that catch. That was a reach. Howman going for the reach and losing it when it went through his fingertips. Luckily, he's going to be pretty, pretty close in the depth of their jail. So he, we might see him again back on this point. All right, we've got to get a ball thrown here from Michigan State. This we is see. the crucial juncture in this game. Yep, Rio, here we go, here we go. Rio's going to be very hard to come down. Oh, wow, we just saw Dennis I think Sullivan. 31. Big catch, is hyped, tosses the ball to Schuster. Yeah, this is, Ohio really needs to focus here. 3 0 down is going to be very difficult to come back from. All right, here we go. Nice block. This now, is, anybody just joining us? Home. Yeah, this yeah. Is home, this so is, it is. This it's is crunch time. They came here, this is what they've been working for all year. Um, a lot of the strategy here is actually, for anybody who's just joining us, um, relies a lot on the gunners on the side. Um, you've got sort of your strong arms who are able to make cross court or direct plays. And then you've got your blockers who are going to kind of defend them from any tags that might come their direction from being exposed during that throw. Nice. Goodness. I think that was a headshot was on a Ohio. Caleb Arnold. That is. I know, it, as of right now, there's no question who uh, a, a post-game interview for MSU would be. It's, it's number 14, Jacob Georges. So in the, in the event of a, of a Michigan State victory, we'll, we'll jump down to the court again, try to get them half court, try to get a team um, to actually give us some, some background into. Is that a trap? <laughs> it's or a catch. That was a catch? Wow. Oh, wow. He's yep. hitting people. He's I think we might it. be talking to 14 coming up. Okay, so we've got Michigan State standing down a little bit, ready for the Ohio advance. Oh, that's Big brutal. Catch by Sandra. So what we just saw there is Ohio had to make a throw. So they either can make it count or try to make it close to counting so they could stay within that shot clock violation. They're under five players now, um, so they're now at a 10, set, 10 second shot clock. We're gonna get them advancing here. Michigan State backpedaling. That might have been an out. Was that was an out corner. for Michigan State. We might have, that was a great dodge. Kept point of contact in on number eight. Number 43 still maintained. Trading throws there, but everyone's still in. Trading throws. And one of the, one of the things about, about at the NCAA rule set with throws is you don't, not only just have to make a throw, it has to be what we call it, the legitimate attempt zone. So it's a, loosely defined as a step and a lunge. So the throw has to be close to a player. It can't just be, you know, 50 feet in the air or right, rolled. Right. And uh, it's got to be it's got to be playable, right? Exactly. You got to be able to make a dive or make some sort of yeah, making it yeah. And so one of the key things um, that you have to do as a was player Was that an out? It was it was in the ground. I believe, it was in the ground. Before. It was yeah, just before. So that was most likely a trap. Is is know when to 
you know, really try to hit someone, and when sometimes just to reset the clock. So, yep. You know, you're not going to be able to make every throw hit someone. So sometimes you're go. just burning the ball, throwing a little bit before someone's leg, where if it hits them in the foot, awesome. But it, if, if nothing else, oh. you're resetting your shot clock. That one, he's finally out there. Yep. Number six on Ohio out. I think we still got, I think we have 10 players on Michigan right. State. So right now it's 10 v 2. This is going to be a brutal point. Ooh, There's really no chance to out. outrun the clock, to out outlast the clock. Here. It's got eight minutes left of gameplay. These guys are going to have to start making catches to get their players back in. Nice catch by Lico there. Down to one Ohio player left. Good block in the corner. And then a nice hit. It starts with one. You know, you're not going to get 10 people out in one throw. So 32 here, trying to methodically work his way through. And you know, one on nine now, it's hard, but it's been done before many times. You know, our, our, our fellow e-board member, Kevin Bailey, has done a couple times. I've done a couple times. You just got to take it one by one. Make a catch here, yep. make a hit there. You can't force it. And then, uh, you know, a lot of times the attacking team will try to will try to press things and they'll leave themselves open. Yeah, that's I mean this is where this is really risky for 32. He's got to make the play, he's got to get himself exposed enough to try to make a catch. And now Michigan State has I think he got that. Wow. Yeah. Wow. Wow. Backpedaling then dives. Backpedaling on the drop catch. That wow, impressive. that was really impressive. And the, and the key moment there was that it wasn't a trap because he got his, he got his forearms under it, yep. blocked it from hitting the ground, ref recognized the talent there, and, and wow, they come away with another point. Seven minutes, 14 seconds to go in this half. They are commanding a, quite a significant lead. So far, I mean, I've, I was talking to Kevin earlier, 2-0, you can kind of overcome. 3-0 yep. starts to get That's hard. kind of a mountain. I don't, I don't know how many times I've ever seen a 3-0 lead come back from. 2-0, uh, it's happened many a times, but 3-0, that, that could be it. Again, the positive, though, still seven minutes left. Yep, still you seven minutes a, left, you first, get this point, first half. You, I think Ohio needs to take a point, though, before this half, because if it goes into halftime with a three-point lead, Michigan State then, if they ever get behind, they can really slow things down and try to, you know, even if they were to lose a point, maybe take 10 minutes off the clock. So I think Ohio really needs to, to get this point with uh, any chance of looking forward to the second half. Um, we're seeing these line up here on the baseline of uh, Michigan State. The interesting to see when they, they, uh, they're confident. If they start subbing some of their, their, their top guys out, give them a little rest, because again, this is gonna be a long day. Gotta win four times for uh, all, all the teams uh, who got a bye to win the championship. So. This is, uh, now we're seeing Ohio, they just came out of their huddle. Probably a new, uh, nah, I wouldn't say new strategy. We don't know what their captain or, or coach was telling them, but it, um, they're probably trying to regroup, really trying to get their confidence back after this 3-0 early deficit. And they started um, well that last one. They, they did, they super well. confident. I think they just kind of got caught thrown a little bit too far. Nemesis was ready for it and made some nice catches. Yep. Um, yeah, MSU has put in a couple of their of their reserve players. Oh, now. nice! 88 again, throwing back to number 41 on Michigan State. Take You've two got some. Out of the rush. So who did I miss? Is early this Michigan State? Out, early 12th out advantage for Ohio. But yeah, okay, couple, for Ohio, good. A couple, well, uh, a couple new players in for Michigan State as they realize, hey, it's been a long day. Let's keep our arms fresh. I didn't even think about that. Yeah. Yeah. So you can sub in players to sort of make sure everyone stays fresh yeah. and ready for the. Nice. And I'm, I'm sure you know if. If this trend keeps going throughout the rest of this game, um, a lot of the top players from MSU is going to be sitting at least one point, if not more. Oh, a good. Thought it was a hit. Yep, Dennis Sullivan going out. Nice hit, and number he gave, eight. He gave the point saying, you know, good throw there by Ohio. He, he real recognized real, as they say. <laughs> Dude, I love it when these players are doing it. I watched a, a Michigan State player get hit right in the chest on center court, and he immediately just gave – Immediate recognition to, hey, great throw, great play. Couldn't uh, couldn't defend against that one. So just to recap, anybody who's joined here uh, on YouTube, on Twitch, um, Facebook, we've got the 2019 Live National Dodgeball Championships. Wow, what a great hit on number 31. That was a great spot. Ohio, really, really commanding a presence here on this point. They need, need, need a point in the next six minutes. Um, five minutes and 48 seconds to actually 
potentially begin their comeback here in this game. So anybody who's joining again, um, we've got a great matchup here. Um, the NCDA tournament, Michigan State versus Ohio. Michigan State commanding a 3-0 lead. 20 minutes into our first half. We've got another half coming up in which Ohio's going to need to regroup, yeah. really need to figure out a new strategy. Michigan State probably able to cycle out players to keep some arms fresh. For sure. I uh, know at least two new faces are out in the court here um, for Michigan State. You, uh, it's 12 players on the court. We're going to have up to 18 on the roster. So you potentially have six people, you know, are, are subbing and, and uh, you know, it's it's good to get them some playing time, you know. Everyone wants to play, so when you have these moments where, you know, maybe the game's in hand, to get those players in because as the bracket progresses and the games get tougher, it's going to be, you know, harder and harder to, to not play your best 12 at every point, at every juncture. So, you know, these earlier matchups definitely give a chance for the some of the, the, the bench players to get out there and get some playing time. Only two balls for Michigan State now. Not getting a third one, but they'll have to. It's their turn to throw. So Ohio's got a ball advantage. They have a man advantage with four minutes left. Don't have to press quite yet, but it's got to be in their head. Okay, let's start making sure we got to move a little bit, a little bit faster than maybe they might want to in general. So is we've got 14. Is he sitting out this game? Is he that is. what we're seeing? Yeah, okay. he, sat, he sat out. He gave him a little bit breather. He's you know been the force for MSU so far and. Uh, and maybe, maybe it shouldn't be surprising that Ohio's going to take a, a little bit of an advantage yeah. early in this point without Michigan State's best player so far uh, out on the court. Okay, but we're seeing Ohio. I think that he's out. I think they're coming that around there. Okay. I thought the same thing happened that hit, happened to the previous point. Right, where yep. He pushed it into the ground, but they're saying it hit the ground first. So what we might not have seen on camera is we had a trap um, by one of our players against Ohio, but it ended up... Again, nobody, it was a sort of neutral neutral throw. All right, we got it, Michigan State. Keep, oh, great Caleb catch. Caleb Arnold looking for that Caleb one, Arnold. wanted it. I saw him playing yesterday, it was great. Another great Team throw on Here we go. Schuster. This is where Ohio's got three minutes left in this half. They've got to pull it together, get the victory, get a point here. Six um, players left for MSU. Yeah, they've still got some work to do because six, six players MSU, this, they still can hold their own. Mm. Trying to catch 30 sleep in there, but he's, he's able to avoid it. point, 23, let's see what, oh, we got a block on 23. Here we go, number 55 but running no, in, five. Number three was looking for the catch there. He had a, a ball in his hand initially, thought, uh, may have thought the other team's gonna thought, think he's gonna go for the block. He then dropped it looking for that catch. Yeah. They wanna bring back a lot of play. Wow, they what a great a dodge catch. on 31. team catch there. Schuster's upset, and and Captain Kevin Wynn is, is is saying, "Hey, let's let's settle down a little settle bit." Settle down. And Schuster's a very uh, we like the passion, very emotional, but yeah, <laughs> very emotional player. Um, let's keep the passion, but not at up. the officials. Yes. <laughs> Good hit there. What would happen in the event of uh, uh, some overheating of a player? Is yeah. that that could be a red card? That could, could be, be a, a yellow, yellow card. card? Yeah, most more likely that's going to be a yellow card. Okay. Um, you know, if you ever. You know, excessive, uh, you know, uh, disrespect or, or vulgarity, direct, especially directed at either opposing player or an official. Yep. Um, that could be that be grounds for a red card. Okay. And, and a red card would be pretty then, devastating to yeah, a player. The, the penalty for a yellow card is that player is out the rest of the point, and your team plays a man down the, the remainder of that point. So you can't get him back out from jail. Correct. He's out of jail, say, so you're down. Say he was at the start of a point, you had nobody in jail, and then he's out, and you make a catch. That player cannot come back in. Right. And then a red card is not only can that player not play the rest of the game, but then that team plays a man down the rest of the game. So you would play with 11 people the remainder of that match. Called timeout here, I think, for MSU. I think MSU called timeout. It could be Ohio, but, um, you know, Ohio looking, they have a minute 43 left. Looks so like four people from Michigan State really left. For Michigan State, they just want to, they just they can just last, outlast this minute and 43 seconds. Exactly. And then there's no really no repercussion for it. There, you know, it's yep. nobody gets a point. They get to take it on to the next half, still with their 3 0 point and advantage. And I mean, at practice, now you, you practice these situations where, hey, you're, you're one of the last guys, and there's a, 
everyone's in for their time, and you're just saying, how, how long can I last? You know, it's not necessarily let's you know try to get everyone out. It's hey, make smart throws, make good blocks. If a catch arises that the ball looks, you know, it's a good spot, go for it. But no need to reach here. There's no need to be aggressive on Michigan State's part. They only have a minute 40 left. The biggest go. thing is they can't afford a shot clock violation. Yep. Can't afford a shot clock violation. Even really can't afford a catch, but a catch could potentially swing it. They only get they've got four play. Wow, that was a good block. A confident block right there. <laughs> he's a he's a very oh, good blocker. Ooh. There we go. Great catch. Running into each other but managing to keep it a, a live a ball. Minute 15 down to three left. players. Minute and Weekland, he was the, he, as I go. mentioned They're earlier, need he to was get their shot clock going. He was the Michigan State player who killed almost eight minutes Here we yesterday. Go. Shot so clock throw. He, uh, he's experienced in this regard of just, hey, making smart throws, trying to kill this last minute. All right. Nice oh, catch. No. He had to do it. He had to throw it for the shot clock violation. And that went We're down to two. We've got 46 seconds left. This is where the team, you know, Michigan State's got all the balls. So. You look at Ohio here, number five. They're just they want tell, telling Larson, "What are you thinking?" Larson went up, put everything he had in that throw, but then went over the the, the throw line, oh, so he was out. Got too and five's like, about five's like, "Hey man, we need you out here. We need your arm. What are you thinking?" So this is where it, we've got that did not seem like a playable ball. That one, that one was, that one was a 17 nice, seconds. nice dodge. Seventeen seconds left. MSU's gonna have to make at least one throw, maybe two. They're needing to make one more throw. Nice. And that's a catch. That's There's a catch. Eight seconds, eight seconds left. left. Oh, my. Why Jack. did he do that? What? He didn't need to throw. They called timeout, it looks like. Did they call timeout, or are they saying they did not call timeout? They did not. Okay, we're waiting for the call on this one. That would have been a seven seconds. They did. They Kenny Mize, the timeout. Kenny Mize is the head rep oh. from Saginaw Valley saying, MSU did, in fact, call timeout there. So that ball that Jack Hilt threw did not count. It I was mean, that after is the whistle. lucky, or he knew, or maybe he saw something that we didn't see, the other team didn't see, that they had already called the timeout, so he kind of threw the ball away. I, but that was, I don't know what he was thinking. Yeah, that was, that could have been <laughs> even you know, Even if you know a timeout, there, like there's, you hold on to that ball. there's no rational sense to, yeah. to just lob that ball like he did. So <laughs> he definitely <laughs> caught a break there. Um, Schuster was very fired up saying he called timeout there. And, and the referees did say yes, the timeout was called. So now there's seven seconds left. Uh, I believe Michigan State threw, I think the, the catch that Weakland threw was with nine seconds left. So I don't believe Michigan State should have to throw here. And even if even if they did, if they but were a shot clock, it would probably be so little time left that again, I don't think yeah, Michigan I don't think State, either has, State to, has to throw. Yeah, has to throw. So Ohio State's or Ohio State. Sorry, <laughs> I, again, as a, you know, so can't, call, can't call Michigan State, Michigan can't call Ohio, Ohio State. Um, <laughs> with looks like two balls here for Ohio, they're probably gonna run up, put a team throw on, hope they hit them. But if you look in the corner, Jack Hill has kind of arranged the balls, so any ball that comes in and were to hit one of those balls on the ground it's is going to be immediately dead. Yep. So he's going to be in the corner. He's got this wall of balls in front of him. He's got two ball. He's got a ball in his hand to block. He's just saying, "I'm just trying to survive these last seven All right. seconds." Last, we got Ohio is going to rush in here and try to get the remaining Michigan State player out again, fortifying himself in the corner. This is a this is this is big. I mean, Ohio could really use this if they're gonna and if they're gonna sprint in. And they've got seven seconds a third left ball. in this half. They were, the referees were counting. There was only nine balls on the court. So if that's ever the case, where you know throughout the course of play, maybe one you know went to the sidelines didn't get put back in. It's gonna be placed in the middle. So Ohio's gonna get this because they're gonna be running yep. up. Jack's gonna not gonna up. be mo moving yep. anywhere. So they're gonna have three balls to throw. Seven seconds left. Jack Hill, the lone remaining Spartan. Team throw, right? You, you just got to throw. Everyone's you're gonna, you're just got to throw it. You're going to run up, grab this three ball, and they're going to say one, two, and they're all going to throw on three. Who do you think going to go here? Do you think – is this Caleb here? It looks like Caleb's run, like yeah, ready to run, like to, get run to get that ball. It looks like he's going to try to gun it. Oh. And – Are they making a substitution? It looks – Jack Hill is a very big individual, and so they're putting in Broski, number three, and he uh, he hurt his knee yesterday. So he can't really run or anything, but I think they really trust his blocking. They trust that you know he's a much smaller individual yeah, than Jack Hill, so it's hard. Less of it's, a target. It's harder yeah. to hit, less of a target. Hey, this is good. I mean, it's good they're taking it this seriously. Yeah. They're, even though they're commanding a 3-0 lead, seven seconds to go in the first half, that 
they're not taking any chances. No. They don't want, I mean, again, a big player like uh, Jack, right? Number 13. Yeah. Here we go. So this is it. They're rushing in. Caleb grabbing the ball. He's going to rip it. Oh. Oh, my God. Oh my what gosh. a throw. What a throw. Oh, it did not hit. I agree with the referee. I, agree. I think it I hit agree. him. I agree. Definitely think it hit him. I think it hit him and then hit with the balls that knocked away. With .5 seconds to go in the first half, Ohio manages to get that point that they needed in order to maybe maybe summit that deficit. That yep. is huge. Yeah. That's incredible. Yeah. We, we, we had, the, we had the, the, the roster ready to go. Thank you. Um, we're, this is incredible. So they ran out the rest of the time. Ohio huge, got the point. Huge point for Ohio there. Excellent. So we're going to throw to break. We're going to take a quick break at halftime. Uh, thanks for watching. We'll join you in a couple minutes. Everybody, welcome back to the 2019 National Codge Dodgeball Championships. Um, you're joining us live here during the Michigan State Ohio game. We're at halftime. I'm joined here with Colin O'Brien. Uh, legendary Michigan <laughs> State player. Um, Might be what a great much. game. Yeah, this, yeah. Is, this has been amazing. It's been a great great first half of play. Michigan State coming out very strong to start. But then Ohio getting that point they needed to close the half with just under a second left. Yeah, if, if you're just joining us, we had a pretty intense moment. We had about seven seconds left on the clock. Michigan State had to come running in um, and get the last chance kill to actually make up for the deficit that, that they had the entire half. Yeah. It was 3-0, Michigan State commanding a lead, um, and now it's chances little, yeah, are right, looking pretty good. You get two points easy. So, yeah, two so points. Three three's much harder, right. Huge for Ohio there to, to close out. You know, got some stats at, yeah. at halftime. Jacob Georges, I believe, was leading the way with, I think, six kills. I took a picture of it. But six kills on, I think, a three or four catches for Michigan State. Um, Schuster right behind with four four catches. And uh, a big one. As the opening rush here, Michigan State saying that. Wow, ball's Ohio, flying. Here we go. Ohio false started. Referees did not call it. That's what it looked like right here. Yeah, yeah. we had a false start in the corner. But uh, uh, referees said it was all good. That's one of the things that's really hard to call because as a ref, you know, you're looking at the whistle, you're trying to make sure that no one steps into play yet. Right. Um, you can't be running or anything prior to the, the to the, the the whistle. And um, you know, a lot of times, you know, as when I was captain, um, I didn't want our team to fall start because the penalty is uh, All right. is the captain then has to sit out. So that doesn't make you very happy no. as a captain. You get some freshman to step out exactly. and you're sitting on the sideline. But then my last year uh, when I was in grad school and I was no longer captain, I said, all right guys, let's, let's, try, to, let's, let's try to go a little bit faster. If we fall start, I'm not out anymore. So, <laughs> so you're okay. So yeah, yeah, I was like, hey guys, like, let's go. Um, so anybody who's joining us right now at the 2019 National Dodgeball Championships, we are here live at Grand Valley State. Um, right now, you're catching the Michigan State-Ohio game. Michigan State in the black and yellow, not usual Michigan State colors, and then Ohio in green. They'll call it gold, but true. Sorry, gold. Hard, hard, yeah. to get, hard to get gold and, you know, Exactly, that's apparel. true. So it's gold. And then um, for any uh, review, for any of our newer viewers, anybody who's just joining, this is NCDA rules. So we've got two halves, 25 minutes apiece. Um, each team is trying to eliminate you know, like any other dodgeball game. They're trying to eliminate all the players on the opposing team. And that's only when you can get a point within that half. So right now... Does, um, doesn't matter how many players you have on the court. Right, doesn't matter how many players you have on the court. Um, you eliminate everybody else on the other half, and you're going to get that point. We had a great half, 3-1 um, to one after the first half of this Michigan State-Ohio game. Ohio really gaining momentum after getting an amazing kill. Um, they have seven of the balls here so they have an early ball advantage which which is going to be key because not only can you do what they just did in team throw but when you have ball advantage it's it's harder to impose pressure from the other team you know so there's less people to you have to worry about throwing at you per, per chance as a counter when you throw you know as they're moving up as a unit there's, there's less overall pressure they can enforce on you so that's why ball advantage is so key not only oh great catch wow. that was Howman on 20 on, on 31 Opori Donkwa a veteran oh, player. He, yeah. He was, uh, I think this is his sixth season. He did, he did grad school as well at MSU, I believe. And so he's a veteran player for MSU. Um, wow. You know, falling in. Got to want that one back, I think, for number 31 for Michigan State. Right here. I got it. Oh, so we had somebody yelling uh, pop. pop. I was curious what was going on. Um, 
I've got a pop ball with me. We can show that to the <laughs> viewers later. Um, that surprisingly happens kind of often. I mean, yeah. we, what we saw here was actually the ball seemed to pop because somebody threw it. It hit one of the guardrails. So um, and again, these balls are flying at 60 to 70 miles an hour. Exactly. And so we're going to get some impact either from a person or an inanimate object. These balls are going to balls are going to pop. And uh, one of the things that's allowed in college dodgeball, it's called pinch throwing. Ah. It's where you're able to wrap your fingers into the ball so that rubber meets rubber. And what, you get, what happens when you do that is, one, the balls go much faster because you have a little bit more of a, of a hold on yeah, it. Yeah, you can really. Now, how does that, though, how does that warp the throw, though? So you're grabbing, you're physically yep. grabbing this ball. That's probably going to give it some spin. It does, yeah. So then it's going to curve the ball, too. So if you're a right-handed thrower, you know, depending on your arm slot, it's either to go, you know, top to bottom or right to left, and reverse if you're, you know, left to right if you're a left-handed thrower. Now, what we're seeing here is we've got Ohio standing off Michigan State. They threw the ball away a little bit um, to stay within their shot clock. But Ohio still managing to dominate the neutral zone. Michigan State not on their heels, pretty confident on, their ba on the baseline. Um, but definitely Ohio needs to play this confident to kind of over. Well, that could have that could have been the short just before. I think it skipped oh, into so, Peyton Oh, okay, there. so he was disappointed. Yeah. Uh, Peyton was disappointed that he didn't get the, the catch Good on hit. that. Good hit. Great on hit. On Evan Barra for Michigan State. Ohio dominating this this here we go to start the second oh half. almost got the, almost got the tag on it that got, it did it looked like it clipped weakland out in front but it, oh it did yeah we were looking at 11 i was in the same yeah, spot yeah, as you yeah. and uh, it looks like it clipped 24 on the way in though okay so we've got number 43 on michigan state oh uh peyton schuster captain really commanding a presence here for the team Number six um, for Ohio, probably their best thrower, reached for a catch there on Jack Oh, Hill. that is so disappointing when that happens. You're trying to go for that that catch and slips through the fingers. All right, we've got 55 here on Ohio, though. He's 32, wow. just threw it right through Schuster's chest, and he's upset at himself. He, he wants that one back for sure. Yeah, Schuster, big loss for Michigan State. Oh, no, the referee got hit or something over there. He's, he's down holding his head. Oh, wow. Referees going to be, or the players going to be going back to their huddles. Um, yeah, again, I, I mean, this is, you get hit with a stray catch or a stray ball that you're not, you're not prepared for. That can rock you. And I mean, you're a referee, you know, you're, you're trying to yeah, watch you're, on you're the court, like look at all the throws, make you're sure You're watching feet doing. for a referee. I yeah, mean, yeah. Like, and, uh, I think that a ball across just came in and just oof. got him uh, he, when he was not looking. Again, 70, 70 mile an hour. Rubber ball. Yep. That is not going to be mark. pleasant. They, they leave, leave a, mark. a mark. Many of bruises I've had in my time. I watched somebody yesterday, these balls. Um, or we were talking about yesterday, that uh, some brutal hits, one to the face. Yeah. You can be backpedaling, take one to the neck. Exactly. Turn yes. around, unfortunately, take one to the back. That one's, that one's filled with a lot of shame. But <laughs> um, <laughs> that, the thing is, too, those hurt more than anything. You're, you don't have a lot of padding in your back, <laughs> right. and you think, like, oh, I don't want to get hit in the face, and then you turn, <laughs> and it hurts so much more in the back <laughs> than it does anywhere else. I, I still think it's a little bit of shame. It's the shame <laughs> element that's, that's increasing the pain. Yeah. All right, we've got Ohio standing down. The Michigan, two, three players coming in. Oh, here we go. They're going to backpedal. And now why would why would uh, 41 here, why would why would Jake Lico throw the ball away while he's backpedaling like that when he can use it for a I think, defense? I think um, that was actually a throw from oh, oh, almost from 11. So I think Lico threw... And I don't think 11 was certain if that ball was close nice enough to reach the Michigan shot State. clock. Okay, okay. So I think 11 he threw it away. 11, just to make was sure. 11 threw an another one in to say, you know, in case that ball that ball wasn't judged to be good at, close enough, we don't want to get a balls over violation. And again, this is where shot clock territory can be really dangerous for a team that's they've got three on the court on the baseline. Um, their shot clock, when you got under five players, gets reduced to a 10 second shot clock. So they've got to make sure that they throw a ball. In 10 seconds right now, they're having their team count off. The penalty for a shot clock violation means that anybody who violates relinquishes all their balls to the other side of the court. And that would be devastating for a team of three to be facing a charging Ohio. Yeah, if you have a shot clock violation, violation here, you're going to team throw on one of your players regardless. Oh, wow. Good hit there, team throw by Ohio. That's going to be Max Antilla, who's out. That's a, another big loss for Michigan State. And here you go. This is the shot clock violation. So you kind of saw there were a couple balls in Michigan State's new, uh, Michigan State zone 
but it weren't, wasn't close enough where any of their players could easily grab it. So right. that shot clock is keeps going, but they're not going to run up 10 feet to try to grab the ball then just to get hit. So then a shot clock violation occurred, and now 10 balls over to Ohio. So this is, this is going to be pretty big, 41. I expect them to probably target this is Jack Jake. here. Yeah. Um, you know, probably put three on him, but maybe Liko is a better catcher, so maybe yeah, all the balls are saying. Here we go. go. Liko's running back. Oh, we get an out. Out on 13. Okay, so we've got Ohio. Now, again, this is where to move the game along. The shot clock violation helps move the pace. Um, it's going to force Liko to actually make. Oh! Reaches for a Lico catch. Liko gets, a, gets an out in. on Ohio. All right, but he couldn't. And this is so big for Ohio. If they could pull off a point. It, with 18 minutes left in the second, this gives them ample amount of time to to tie it up. I expect two more points to be scored yeah. in this game, so we still got. It's gonna be it's gonna oh. be at least four points to win this game. All right, here we go. Team throw. That's, that's an out. And that's a that's a point for Ohio. Wow, what we were saying could not happen in the beginning ends yeah. up they they end up coming right back. And that, and that shows how big that point was at the end of the half. You I know, mean, that was that, four points in the first was, half. If that was that they didn't get that that point to make it three to one. You know, 18 minutes, them having to score two more might be a little bit hard. But now, you know, they t if they take this next one, it's all tied up 3-3. Three, three, and then it's, you know, one point probably will be the last one. As, as I said, I, th I expect, you know, four points to win this game yeah. at least. So I mean, that's what it's, 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 it's not. It's, they're not going to kill 18 minutes here. So we've got 18 minutes left in the second half. Um, for anybody just joining us, you're joining us for the 2019 National Dodgeball Championships, Ohio versus Michigan State. Great game. What we what we thought was actually going to be kind of in the bag is ends up being a really a really good game. And, um, and the tables have, have turned. You know, Ohio now is the one really pumped up. Yeah. Really excited. You know, they're they've taken two points in a row, and MSU's looking a little more solid. Right. Before we were seeing MSU on the baseline, super confident. Yep. Before they were just they were always getting pumped up, and now they're actually having these team huddles. Yeah. They're and they're making sure that okay, how how do we gather our composure, gain the momentum back, and actually sort of make sure that Ohio doesn't come back to tie this. I think the biggest thing in these last few points is Ohio's taking an early advantage. It's been Michigan State down to about eight people within about a minute of the of the point starting. So I think that's probably got to be a point of emphasis here for the Spartans. Hey, let's let's stay alive for a little bit. Let's get ball possession. All right, we – oh, see, yeah, again, exactly. that's that's an integrity play right there. Is you had two, yeah. two players fighting over a ball center and – each of them kind of gives it back. Yep. And then I think Michigan State had all their players there as well, and Ohio State or Ohio had to just uh, backtrack. So Michigan State easily able to go just grab that Did ball. Did Schuster after. just grab something out of the air here? I think, or that, was I think that, that was into the ground, too. That was into was the just ground? barely before, uh, before him. He was, he was looking for that catch. Number three, Schuster, as you can tell, I mean, commands a presence center, center stage right here. Powerful lefty. Yeah. And uh, – you know, lefties in a lot of sports, you know, baseball, you don't, you don't see them as pitchers as much, so they can can cause problems. But on the dodgeball cart, there's so many more righties than lefties. And with that curve coming in from these pinch throws, that reverse curve from a lefty can really throw people off. Yeah. You can so catch you off guard on a cross-court exactly. shot. Exactly. Yeah. You're so used to the ball following that same flight pattern. When all of a sudden it does the reverse, it can get you. Yep. Oh, that's a good look from Ohio number 32 there on the cross. That's one of the things where you see a, t a, a team member backpedaling and you're trying to throw it behind them, so they kind of backpedal into your cross. And he yep. just put it a little bit too far behind him there. Bain throws so hard, he falls down. He's putting, that's some heart and soul throw <laughs> right there. That is <laughs> essentially all on the line, because if you get caught on the ground, that's uh but what is interesting, so actually earlier before, it might have been, you know, the call in this game is they, they've taken, they, earlier they took out their best player, one of their best players, yeah. number 14, Georges. Um, Georges was taken out. It's a long day of dodgeball, so they're going to try to rest his arm. And oh, that's on a catch. Georges out on a catch. Oh, good block there by Lucas Walsh. And so they're going to try to rest some of their best players to actually let them advance, but what that did was let Ohio actually catch up. It's always a tightrope you have to walk. Yeah, it was Georges who got them the three-point exactly. lead. It's yeah. always a tightrope where you want to rest people, but the game's not over yet. You kind of nice have block. to get a judge like, okay. Oh, he wanted know, that. He wanted that catch. Where, when, when can we kind of ease up a little bit yep. and not and not keep going all out? Oh, wow! That was an incredible Schuster. All hands catch by Larson. Yikes! Let, Schuster let that one get away from him, and Larson really took advantage of that. 
Baltimore. Here we go, standoff, shot clock going. Here we go, Ohio's gonna. All right, so what, what we saw here too is as, as the team advances, they put their gunners up in the wing, and you're gonna get some blockers to come in to make sure that Michigan State doesn't advance and catch them off guard, which is I love. I mean, that's the coolest part about this team plays. It's all about guarding, guarding your cannons. Yep. There is uh, the, the hardest thrower the NCAA has ever seen. <laughs> was my freshman year. He played for University of Kentucky. His name was Wes Hopkins. Wes Hopkins. He threw over 80 miles an hour. Whoa. It was insane. That's gonna, and that's going to hurt. He was so valuable to Kentucky. They would literally have three or four people by him at all times. And it would just like, it was like the parting of the Red Sea where they'd be in front of him. They'd open up. He'd come throw. They'd come back in front of him and backtrack. It was an, it was an it. incredible thing to watch because his, his arm was Artillery. so strong that they they said we're protecting him at all costs because he could just mow people down. How'd that strategy work? Did they? Did <laughs> they? It, it was one of the, it was the best mean, they Kentucky did, they team. They didn't win. They didn't win. But it was a uh, they lost a close one oh. at Grand, to Grand Valley in the semifinal that year. Um, wow, number fifty six on Ohio, Matthew Wurtenberger got got a nice kill on that one. That was he caught him on the ground. Yeah, that's that was the my first match ever at NCDA was versus that Kentucky team, and uh, it was a welcome to the league exactly. coming out there 80, 80, uh, 85 miles an hour. You didn't take one to the face though. I did not. Thank <laughs> thank heavens. Yes. I was I was not ready. I took a that tournament. I took a, a face shot from a Kent State player, but Ooh. but not from Wes Hopkins. So um, I, I still have my face now. So <laughs> uh, I mentioned earlier, I knew Kentucky did, didn't ever get a national championship yep. because Grand Valley commands. Yes. A significant portion of the national titles in this league. They have won 10 of the last 12 years, including six straight. Yeah, and so this is actually, they are the team to beat the perennial national champs. Undefeated um, this year. Undefeated this year, um, which is pretty incredible. I think 33 straight overall. Yeah, overall. dating back to last year. I think it's about 33 oh straight now. Um, they're looking not only to win this year, but you know, keep that streak going because the record is 40. That's the 41. second time. I don't yeah, know if we can. I don't know. Rough. I don't think we can see the ref here that just got hit. But that's the second time he's gotten hit in this game. He was the one that got clocked earlier. And uh, from experience, I can tell you when you're refing or you're, you're a sideline. The, Ooh, the, the great ball. get. Number 13. I think that was Jack. Yeah, yeah. Jack Hilt getting the getting the kill. It is much harder to dodge and balls hurt more when you're refing because you're just not in the mindset of I'm playing. Right. So when you get hit in the court, it's like, oh, whatever. But when you're in the ref, it's like, ow. Ooh. Like, what? I'm just trying <laughs> I'm to do just my job. I'm just trying to do my job here. Ooh. Jack, again, going for the cross court. Nice kill, Sullivan, number eight. Ben Sullivan, good hit. All right, so again, I mean, Ohio still commanding some presence here. Michigan State seeming like they're just trying to hold them off. Before Dunk was got to be smarter there. He he took a shot they didn't need to. He left himself All wide right. open. Here and we then go. Ohio team throw. Team throw. Hit coming him on in. the cross. Eight. Now again, it's a nice see, block by that Jack. Was super Come on, smart Jack. There, he baited him into that throw. Yep. He looked like he was about to throw. Ohio threw that cross in, and he just turns easy. And block. on a different on a different ball throw, that might have just been an easy catch. Exactly. Yeah. But he, he knows right now he, he's valuable, doesn't need to reach for anything, so just Oof. simply blocking that ball. What's so amazing, as, you, as, you, as we commentate and then now the, the people in the stands, we honestly do have to watch, watch our own heads sometimes as these balls will come flying in from cross-court shots. Good hit by Dennis Sullivan there on number five. Moel, Moel, unclear how to pronounce that name for, for the Ohio player, but um, a good shot by Dennis Sullivan nonetheless there, hitting him in the leg. Justin, yeah. Dustin, number five, one of the captains. So we got a shot clock. We got the teams yelling it out in an effort to be more communicative. Yeah, we don't want to get caught. Oh, oh my. my! What a, what a what catch! A catch. Vico had two blocking balls, two and that ball just kind of stuck in between his forearms. All right, what a great swing for Michigan. They get another player. Ohio loses a player out of that. I mean, that was that was clutch for Lico. Okay, we've got an advance here. Uh, hopefully a team throw might get somebody out. Again, another advance by Ohio. Oh, almost got Jack almost getting him out. Ooh. Jack laying on the ground. Oh, wow. Whoa. George's. Yeah, now that's, headshot. again, so that's not a double. You can't get a double a double kill here. Um, it bounced off the face of the, the Ohio face player. The face of the <laughs> Ohio player and the back of another Ohio player. But as soon as the as soon as soon it comes off of a player, the ball is, the ball is dead, right? It's not necessarily dead, but right. it, can't, can't it could be caught. Yeah, there's right. no, it's not eligible for anything else. Right. So if you block it into someone, that person is still alive. But if yes. you block it in yourself, you're out. 
A ball is only eligible to get one person out per throw. Excellent. Okay, so this is kind of a little momentum swing after Liko's no-handed no -handed catch. No -handed catch? Yeah, I mean, forearm catch. Forearm catch. <laughs> Um, and that was really big, too, because MSU only had six players there. So if he would have got out on that throw, they'd be down to five players. Yeah. And instead now, uh, they have All right. Michigan State. seven. And o Ohio down Sullivan to Sullivan taking aim. That's Under a, that's a great throw him. Sullivan That's a good throw. Because it's either going to hit his foot or it's going to be short, and mm -hmm. you reset the shot clock. Yep. So you're not risking throwing a catch Very with that safe. Throw. Ooh. So I think what Liko is trying to point out, oh, wow, that was two hits there. Okay, but they did. They get a catch? They got one of them was a catch. They're calling, they're calling a catch. Caleb Arnold catch and got hit. Yeah, kill and catch. Payne Schuster very fired up. Did not Georges, like the call. Georges out. Yeah. Oh, because he, oh, I think Georges, oh, yeah, yeah. He threw that catch on So Georges Caleb. again, 14 out. We got Jack Hilton in the corner there for Michigan State. That seems to be a great drop catch. And then Sullivan, though, gets out for Michigan State, too. So Schuster comes in, but it's yeah. just the captain, Dennis Sullivan, goes out. Great drop catch by Rivera. Really swung the team here. Now we're down to four with Ohio. That's something um, Rivera's really improved upon. He was he was uh, on my team when I played, um, and his catching has gotten much better these last two years. I mean, this is – oh! And so what you saw here, so number 50 on Michigan – he had to try to make a play on it, but he needed to keep all points of contact within the field of play. Or not all points, one point of contact Correct. within the field of play, Correct. and then he couldn't quite stretch yeah. for it. Sorry, yeah. Oh, my. Oh, good. Well, good. And right there. Oh, he's right able there. To keep his foot in, but able to keep his foot in. They fouled up Number 31. Daniel Dunkwa. Wow. Oh, good dodge. Wow, great dodge. Again, this is this is a co-ed league. So, why did what was the just, call there? I think she realized she was running out of time. She needed clock, shot clock and just trying to get that that ball over as, as quickly as possible, but a little bit too late. But yeah, the point of contact could be rough. Um, there was one time I was I, I jumped in the air and I realized I was kind of falling out of bounds and I only I kind of just had to throw my leg out and I just landed completely on my side, uh, like horizontal to the ground and it. It was painful, but I kept that point of contact yeah. in. <laughs> now, we might have a, our numbers switched up on our end, but I'm, I'm hoping this is this is Rebecca. No, that's not for Michigan State. That's the. Uh, oh, sorry. There yeah. we go. Okay, perfect. Um, yeah, Rebecca Chappelle has been a, a veteran Okay, good. This Michigan is Jennifer State. McLuhan. Okay, so Jennifer managing to dodge five in balls. Including a suicide throw from Peyton Schuster. So he, oh, he so jumped, he jumped. and to get closer and then threw... Jennifer's this has oh been my. incredible dodging. So Jennifer McLuhan really, really taking on Michigan State. She's going to have to make a make a catch here to bring somebody else in, but she's holding she's holding strong here. I love this. This is she's scrappy. Let's do this. Okay, let's see. A she's going to need to make really a catch. Yeah, too. catch could make a turn. You might have catch come in. There's only five players left for Michigan State, so a catch. All right, Jennifer. Make it four v two. You've got a lot of people rooting for you. Except Colin. Yeah. So I'm sorry. <laughs> Colin's not rooting for you. Colin. Oh! I root Jennifer. For, I root for great plays. So okay, if great plays. That, yeah, I would have okay. been, been just as hyped, uh, even though it would have been the expense of, of my alma mater. Jennifer taking it to the face, too, a little bit on, on one of those. That one, she's going to need some time. All right, so that was a big get. That, that was, was incredible a, effort, though. That was, a, that was an incredible effort. Dodging I mean that close to 20 balls throughout four, that course four of that, shots, those last minutes. Four shots with a suicide throw in there. Um... And we're going to get some updates while we wait for these uh, these baselines to reset. And, and um, that four four two now that might be that might be it was seven twenty three left. Um, it's going to be really yeah, hard. Yeah, that's going to be hard for, to overcome that deficit. Ohio to come back and get two points. So, Colin, go ahead and read us some of these updates that we're getting. Yeah, from halftime, um, Miami was up two one over UWP. Uh, UMD. Can you give a little context too on yeah, some of these? Yeah. yeah. So Miami of Ohio and uh, Wisconsin Platteville. Wisconsin Platteville had a good game. They won their first one. Uh, Miami is currently the fifth seed, so a close game. Platteville has been showing a good tournament this year. They so they're uh, trying to make Miami earn it. Yeah. Okay. Um, Maryland up 3-0 over uh, VCU. VCU 
nine people. They went to three overtimes yesterday. I have a soft spot for Maryland right so now because we've been staying in the same hotel. Yeah. So, like, uh, <laughs> Maryland's come a long way. They've got a long journey ahead yep. of them. But uh, they're a group, good group of kids, so I'm, I'm really excited for them. Yeah. Uh, I think VCU just might be out of gas. They have, they have nine yeah. people. Yeah. Three overtimes yesterday. That means your top six are doing three clutch points. And let me yeah. tell you, overtimes – it's like playing three points. The amount of the drain it goes on you yeah. because it's, it's a 10 second shot clock, and with just six people, yeah, you're it's constantly six v six running, running up and down. Yeah. So it's really draining. I think yesterday probably just caught up to them. They had some great wins. They they beat is CMU. There, is there a shift mentally when you're adjusting now to new boundaries in that six v six? Has anybody ever made that mistake of realizing, oh shoot, I stepped out too early? <laughs> well, it's the same. It's the same full court side. It's just there's only six of you. So I mean, it's like got it. Okay. It's, um, oh, we've got it's some great draining. outs here. And um, Michigan State getting the ball possession off the rush, hitting someone. And so it's Ohio's throw. And uh, this uh, is a great start if you're a Michigan State Spartans fan to, uh, to this last, this seventh point of this match. And it looks like they're just kind of trying to play it slow. Oh my gosh, he caught that. That's a catch. That's a, that's a catch. Another one by Jacob Georges. He's thrown a couple of these last two points, but he's been on fire. Yeah, he's coming back into his element here. Ohio really needing to pick it up. Uh, oh, we got a good team catch. Team catch. Nice. Oh, great team catch in the Coburn corner up, there. Coburn was saying, let me catch that because <laughs> if Coburn had caught it, they would have gotten an, an It would have been a normal, a normal catch, and the thrower would have been out. But because Sandro's caught it, Coburn stays in, but uh, the thrower is not out. Yeah, so really, Ohio needs to. They need to play fast. They need to play faster, more aggressive potentially. The hard thing is to come over this four-two four deficit. But when you're in these situations, you have to play fast. But that doesn't mean throw all your balls because when the other team gets ball possession at such a large number like it is now, you can't you can't really do anything right. because if they have eight people, you only have two. So you only have one person to help protect you. They can hit you in transition. So playing fast is you have to run up throw and get get the other team to kind of engage in that back and forth quickly as opposed to just we're gonna walk okay we're trying to kill all these 15 seconds between each one of our throws um, but a, a thing a lot of teams do when they get in these situations is just kind of what happened in Ohio is we got to play fast throw 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 and the other team has 10 balls now and it's like well now you can't do anything so now we're just gonna kill yeah, the rest now of we're the gonna game. kill the rest of the time um, so that's a fine tightrope to walk. The the most successful strategy I've found in these situations is you need to get ball possession, so you need to get to seven or eight, and then you play a super high line where you put almost everyone on the, your throw line, and you've got to go for catches because you're putting pressure on the other team, so they can't come too far off their baseline. They can take a couple steps, and then you got to hope from like 25-ish feet that you can make a catch and, and you know get them out of here. But that's really the only strategy I found, like to score points super quickly when the other team knows that they just have to kill the game. Right, right. So yeah, all ten balls following that shot clock violation. Um, so Michigan State walking up, team throw or just one. A lot of pump fakes. I yesterday I was saying to Michigan State we were not pump faking nearly enough. And because really, the, what's the what's the advantage here on on pump faking in terms so of? You don't know if, if someone's pump faking, and the, the biggest thing is if you don't know who's throwing, you don't know which ball to lock in on. So that you can divert your eyes, and that split second of not knowing which ball it is could be all mm. the difference between making a catch, catch or getting hit. And so when you're pump faking, you're getting you're drawing attention from everyone's eyes, and then when that throw comes in, it's a little bit harder. You have that little bit reaction time. So that was something they uh, Michigan State did not do well versus Grand Valley, and I came over to after the game. I said, you guys, you need to pump fake more like this. Yeah. You, you're not. You're oh, not, you're not helping your teammates out. So it's again. Good to see. That was a stretch. Stretch on Michigan State here. Um, Junxian Zhu for Michigan State. He got the nickname Andy from uh, eboard member Jacob Lesky, who he was teaching in Okemos um, my uh, last year as an undergrad, I want to say. And um, he gave he gave him the nickname Andy. He says, "Is, it, is that cool?" And he says, "Yeah." He goes, "For sure." And so uh, <laughs> we always we just called him Andy from that point Andy, forward. Classic. Um, I mean, the last kill we've seen here would have been through a catch. Um, on number five, Dustin Mole, the captain, one of the captains of Ohio, 
We've got Michigan State coming in here strong, trying to get a team throw going, get a get another tag. Yeah, I think they're just. I use tag yeah. kill. What's the other hit? Yep. I mean, those are sort of all, all interchangeable. Interchangeable. Yeah. I think Michigan State's content just to. Whoa! Trying to go for the trying to go for the catch. I think they said we we got four minutes left. We're up to team catch. Oh, there's no need no, to no. Do, to be too aggressive. Yeah, I mean this is up to Ohio to kind of make sure that they're not they're not going home after this. They need to get oh, oh good hit. wow, great hit. Number twelve from Ohio. Wow, that was fantastic. That's a great Gregory spot. Gregory Sterenberg. George's is uh, says the game might be almost over, but I'm gonna still shine a shoe real quick. Yeah, so that was thirty one on MSU who tried to make the catch and then end up falling right through right through. Um, yeah, Daniel Donqua. Did I say Michigan again or Michigan it's State? Okay. No, You've done it's a not. I, I, times. No, no, no. Yeah, <laughs> I literally, I can hear it. You like, you take a beat, and you're like, it hurts you every time. So it's, I'm gonna try. It's better. Michigan State. I know. We've we've had it over the last, you know, probably five to, to eight years in, in football and basketball. <laughs> we've had, you know, we've had the success where oh. it, it happens far less. When I was growing up, you know, ESPN would always say Michigan, and it'd be like, come on, come on. We're, we're got, we're that's ESPN. I'm now. trying to get to the yeah. point where I don't make that mistake. Exactly. Yeah. We've gotten to the, uh, you know, as, as, a, as, a, as a university, it's gotten to the point now where sometimes, you know, the announcer will misspe misspeak and say Michigan State when referring to Michigan. Right, so exactly. that's when it's yeah, like, I was like, the day has come. <laughs> the day, exactly. <laughs> so again, we've got our Jennifer McClune here on Ohio, staying strong, staying in play. She is able to dodge incredibly well, as we saw in the after the or before the previous point, but Georgia's coming here at number 14 on Michigan State. So again, these teams have to. Oh, good team catch! Oh, Dalen Clark looking alive there. 25 looked up, didn't see the ball right away. Dalen spotted it, was able to save his teammate and bring All someone right, we in. We got Skiba coming in, number eight. He's he's trying to throw strong. He's getting a ball right now. He's got to wait till it comes in. Jennifer, oh, oh, good hit. Good hit. Oh, that's going to be difficult. And just under two minutes to go now. I mean, Max Stockel really put himself out there um, when he got the kill and, and unfortunately got the hit himself. It looks and like And look Michigan at this, State's Jennifer. Wow, look at the reaction time from Jennifer. 4-2. Okay, looks like she's it's got to be 5-2. Oh, again. Two, and that's going to be the game. Michigan State's going to advance. Yeah, Michigan State's going to advance to the minute. the Elite 8. Minute 35 left in the second second half of this Michigan State Ohio game. Uh, yeah, looks that's like Michigan State's going to advance to the Elite they're Eight. It, they are they're calling it. They're calling it there. Hands. Okay. And uh, Michigan State advancing to play Maryland, I believe, in the Elite Eight. So really, this is what um, we're, all, we're all striving this for. This is what this is everyone's everyone's striving for. Um, it's this. It's this. This is this the cup. championship cup. So. Um, Colin, I'll leave it to you. I'm going to go uh, join down on the for court. Sure. Get uh, who, who should we talk to? I think for sure Jacob Georges. He Thanks was, Jacob he was Georges. outstanding yeah. that game, um, lighting people up, making some incredible catches. Uh, no doubt in my mind he was the MVP for Michigan State. That's incredible. Okay, so let's do. Let's talk to Jacob. Um, I'm going to let you take over here. We're going to we're going to hopefully run you guys through some replays. Yeah. Yeah. We'll, we'll look, look through some replays here. Yeah, final 5-2 for Michigan State. Um, as, a, as a former Spartan, I'm a happy man. Looking forward to get a couple more wins today. Hopefully, uh, hopefully three more. All right, so right here, Dennis Sullivan. A, a good throw there. 28 for Ohio. Oh, that was the Peyton Schuster hit. Knocking his hat off, knocking his glasses off. A good hit there uh, by... Sullivan, 32 here, being the last remaining Ohio player. And that was that incredible catch by Jacob Georges where he was backpedaling and then dove to his right and caught it. Yep. Uh, that was when we went right through Peyton's chest. And uh, yeah, so moving forward, we're at the Elite Eight now. So we have eight teams remaining and this is really where the competition gets pretty steep uh, Michigan State Maryland Grand Valley all advancing uh, I know it looks like Miami won as well so they they punched their ticket to the Elite Eight 
Um, and we're gonna have some great matchups moving forward. These 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 four games all being simultaneously. Uh, great dodge there by Jennifer on that replay. Dodging five balls and a suicide throw from Peyton Schuster. Um, but I think we have the uh, Miami game, if CMU won as well, coming next on this court. It's going to be a nice 4-5 matchup, so going to be a tight battle. Let's see uh, who can make punch their ticket to the Final Four. And I think we're getting ready to head down and talk with MSU um, following their win over Ohio. We have Jacob Georges let his hair down a little bit before the next game. Um, getting ready here. Yeah, so I th uh, through the Final Four, or getting ready now, Final Four is something everyone wants to get to. You know, it's, it matters in basketball, it matters in hockey, and it matters in dodgeball. So these next matches are going to be huge. Towson University looking for their first Final Four in their club history. Miami as well looking for their first Final Four, I believe. So, you know, two strong teams that are looking to, to, to make history in their, in their club university program. But... You have some regulars here. Michigan State, been to, been to many, many Final Fours. Grand Valley, winning the six straight championships and 10 overall. Um, I don't think they've ever not been to a Final Four. So uh, we're definitely going to have some strong competition here in the Elite Eight and uh, hopefully some incredible matches for everyone watching at home. Um, and so we're going to take a quick break here as we're getting ready to interview um, the NCAA president, Felix Peroni, and also maybe get a post-game interview with some Michigan State standout players following their win over Ohio.